How far are you willing to go to keep your lies and your secrets from being found out? Well, for Christopher Panayotu, he was willing to go all the way to murder. Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Rotonda Tomori, self-proclaimed Mukorora Pavenda. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're new, I like to do stories about true crime and all these mysteries and crazy stories that I find on the internet. And if you're really into that type of stuff, then please subscribe and join the family. Now, let's get right into the story of Christopher Panayotu. So, Christopher Panayotu was born in 1987. There's actually not a lot about his childhood. There's nothing really about his childhood. All that's really known is that he was born in 1987. He was a businessman. He actually owned a OK Food. So in 2004, he met a young woman by the name of Jade. So Jade worked as a grade 7 teacher in Rebia Girls College. And she was known to be amazing at her job. And she cared a lot about her students. And she, they say that she had a very big heart. And she was able to be a mentor and a helper to all her students. And she was just all around a great woman and everyone just loved her and her spirit and they actually met through friends fell in love they were actually together for eight years and so they finally got married in june of 2013 after getting married they moved into a complex in port elizabeth called lovemore park this is when i'm thinking is when jay started to notice that something wasn't exactly right with her marriage so jade started to notice that christopher wasn't paying a lot of attention to her he was spending a lot of time out of the house you know and of course like any other woman or person you don't want to just give up on your relationship or your marriage you want to fight and make it work of course now on the other hand while she was trying to make her relationship work and her marriage work christopher was actually having an affair with one of his uh, employees. She was hired as a manager and her name was Chanel Kutz. Now, their affair actually started before him and Jade actually got married. He was having an affair with this woman and their affair lasted three years, which was all through their marriage included because they had only been married for two years at the time of this whole investigation unraveling. So Jade would actually confide in her best friend and co-worker. She would explain to her how she has tried everything and how their relationship is strained because they don't spend any time together. She explained that she would wake up in the morning uh, to go to work, obviously, and he would still be asleep because of coming back a lot later than she did. And when she would come home, obviously he wouldn't be there because he would be at work himself. And she would try all her best to like, stay awake and try to stay awake for him and wait for him to come home but eventually as a person she would probably fall asleep and he would always come back when she was already asleep and during the weekends when she would try obviously hoping that maybe the weekends they'd be able to spend time together he would claim that he had to go to work so he would go and say that he was going to work during the weekend as well while she would go and spend time with her family. So completely clueless from this, Jade had no idea that her husband was actually having an affair with this woman called Chanel. He would buy her extravagant gifts and he would take her to fancy restaurants and then he would even take her to hotels, like sneakily, obviously, because he couldn't go home with her. But when Jade wasn't around, when she would go and visit her family on the weekends and stuff, he would actually take Chanel to his home that he shared with Jade. So as this affair was going on, Christopher's parents actually found out about this affair and they actually threatened to disinherit him if he didn't stop this affair that he was having with this woman that he worked with. And I'm guessing that he probably, like, told them okay i'm gonna stop so that he doesn't get disinherited from his family fortune so in 2014 christopher approached a man by the name of tando signoni and he was actually a bouncer at a club and this was when he approached tando and he asked him if he could find him a hitman at the time tando didn't know who 
he wanted a hitman for but he did later find out that he wanted a hitman to get rid of his wife jade so christopher actually agreed to pay the amount of seventy thousand rand he said that thirty thousand rand would go to tando who would find this hitman and then the remaining 40,000 rand balance would go to Sizuzake Vomazonke who was actually found out later to be the hitman who was hired for this job. So they planned out this hit that they wanted to do on Jade. They decided to make it look like a robbery gone wrong which would evidently lead to her losing her life. So Jade and her best friend and co-worker would actually take turns in being the ones to drive to work. So sometimes Jade would go and pick up her co-worker and then they would drive to work together. Or her co-worker would come and pick her up and then they would drive to work together. It was probably to help save money for fuel and, you know, just to make things easier for the both of them. So... This is important to the story because they decided that this was the opportunity that they were going to use to hijack her or a robbery gone wrong and have her murdered. Two separate occasions they had planned it out and then they had tried to do what they wanted to do to her but it would go wrong on these two separate occasions. But then eventually on the 21st of April in 2015... That was the day that they succeeded in their plan. So according to Vuma Zonke, Jade was waiting obviously outside her complex for her co-worker because they were carpooling and it was her co-worker's turn to fetch her and they go to work. So her co-worker would obviously text her to say, I've left the house, I'm on my way. So she did that and Jade went and waited outside for her. Sadly, while she was waiting outside, this was when Vomazonke and Tando came to her home in a hired vehicle. And this was when Vomazonke hit her on the head with a blunt object and she fell unconscious. This was when they took her and they put her in the boot of the car and they drove off. They drove off into an area near Guanobule. So when they got into this area, they took her out of the boot and this was when they shot her twice in the back and once in the head and she obviously died from these injuries and then they drove off as if they left nothing there so obviously because her co-worker was on her way to pick her up when she got there she found that there was no one waiting for her and she had already texted her and she had already explained that she would be waiting for her so she was now stressed and worried so at first she decided to call a few people to check if she had maybe already arrived at work, which was probably not the case because she knew that she was coming to fetch her and she had agreed that she was coming to fetch her. This was when she decided to contact Christopher, who was obviously still inside the house asleep. And at first she was hesitant because she did know that he's asleep when jade leaves for work because he does go to work a lot later but she was getting worried like she was getting stressed because she didn't understand why jade wasn't outside waiting for her so this was when when she contacted christopher and christopher answered the phone and he said what do you mean she went to work and this was when she explained that no she didn't go to work she's supposed to go to work with me and she's not here so then christopher then said okay he's gonna open the gate for her and then she can come inside she says that when she entered the complex and got to their residence, Christopher was waiting outside and he seemed really, really worried and really, really stressed about where did his wife go. This is when he entered her car and they left the complex and they went around the area close by trying to see if maybe she walked away for some weird reason or if she was anywhere close by or if someone else picked her up or anything just to try and find her and they couldn't find her and then by 10 o'clock they had already had pictures of her up on social media with the hashtag find jade they had now already filed a missing persons case at the police station because they had no idea where jade disappeared to so this hashtag actually gained traffic really really fast and it was trending and I guess everyone was pretty much trying to find out what happened to Jade and where Jade disappeared to out of nowhere 
at 6 30 in the morning so police officers immediately went into investigating this is when it was revealed that there was a body found in kwanobule in the field after some DNA testing and checks and obviously people coming to confirm, this was when it was confirmed that this was the body of Jade Paniotti. So obviously investigators wanted to find out how someone with a completely normal life, she was a school teacher, she didn't have any weird background, she was just a normal woman who went to work and came home and she didn't do anything weird or do anything or have any enemies. They wanted to understand how a woman like that could end up in a field away from where she was supposed to be waiting and dead. So we know that obviously the first suspect of a murder investigation is always their closest family members. And definitely at this time, the closest of closest family members was her husband. So police immediately started to see her husband as a suspect and they just wanted to see if he was part of what happened to her or not. This is when they started tracking him and watching his moves to try to find out if he knew what happened to his wife or not. So this is when police officers a couple days later had a sting operation. It is not explained exactly how or when this was recorded, but there was a recording of Christopher saying to Sizwe Vumazonke that this was supposed to be a robbery in front of his house where she would lose her life, not a kidnapping, and then her losing her life. But at the end of the day, I guess it was pretty much what he wanted to happen. So this was pretty much the nail in the coffin for Christopher. This was the evidence the police needed for what they assumed and believed that he was indeed involved in this crime. So subsequently after this, he was arrested and Tando was also arrested for conspiracy to commit murder. And Vomazonke was also arrested because he was the one who committed the actual crime. So during the trial is actually when a lot of information was revealed and it was revealed what was his motive for ending his wife's life. So this was when it was revealed that Christopher was actually getting into debt and he was no longer able to support his double life. He realized that he couldn't keep both his mistress and his wife happy and eventually things were going to crumble if he didn't fix the situation that he was in and he couldn't afford to not fix this so his solution to this was for the life of his wife to end i don't know why he thought this was the best solution but this was the solution that he believed was the best solution this is when he decided that he was going to have his wife's life ended after a long and gruesome trial he was finally found guilty and sentenced to life in prison in november of 2017. obviously jade's family were really happy and really relieved to find that they finally found justice and this crazy case of their daughter just disappearing out of nowhere was finally solved you know after two years of trials christopher's family do not believe that he committed this murder they believe that it's conspiracies and it couldn't have been him he tried appealing the case but it was denied he is currently serving his life sentence in saint alban's prison in port elizabeth and that is the case of christopher panayotu and how he decided that the best way to get away from his lies and his secrets was to end the life of his innocent wife. I don't understand why he felt like that was the best decision because if he was having this affair before he even married Jade, why did he marry her in the first place? Because it seems like he just married her to have her suffer emotionally trying to figure out why her relationship isn't working and why her husband doesn't seem interested in her when he was just having an affair the whole time and she had no clue. And to this day, we don't know if if she found out that he was the one behind everything or if she found out that he was having an affair. We're never going to know because she's no longer on this earth to tell us. And he was selfish enough to decide that for his own selfish gain, he wanted to end someone who was completely innocent's life.
which was the worst way possible to leave this earth. He had no right over her life. He should have just ended his relationship with her if he felt that she was not who he wanted to be with. But that is it. And yeah, I feel really bad for her because she didn't deserve to end like that, especially seeing as what people were saying, that she was such a free spirit and such a happy person. She deserved to live a happy life and she died so young. She was only 27 or 28 years old at the time and she, did as a, she didn't deserve to leave this earth at the hands of her husband's selfish gains. But luckily, he didn't even get anything that he wanted because he ended up in prison. So he lost both women and he lost the inheritance that he was probably trying to protect by ending her life. And yeah now he's in prison and i hope he's suffering i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video but thank you guys so much for watching please don't forget to like subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you know when i post but thank you guys so much for watching bye